Hello, in this short video we'll look at how to use Execution Manager Jenkins plugin. This video will be specifically for you can, using it with a freestyle project. In this how-to video you will learn how to use Jenkins plugin for Worksoft Execution Manager in a freestyle build. Worksoft Execution Manager manages the test lab of agent machines, the login, the desktop context, etc. to run certified processes and HP ALM test labs. So basically when you're wondering how do we get a desktop context to open things like a browser or an Excel spreadsheet or SAP GUI, Execution Manager will handle that for you. The Jenkins plugin supports both freestyle and pipeline builds, or pipeline as code. In this video we will show you freestyle, there will be an additional video specific to pipeline builds in this series. The Jenkins plugin supports running existing execution manager requests, so we'll see how you can point to one and run them. It, you can point to a bookmark that's been created and will run all the certified processes associated with the bookmark. Or you can actually point to a specific certified process and have it run. The result attributes can be set um, from, the, from Jenkins in the, from the request um, and then there's an optional weight parameter that can be set. So the way this works is the Jenkins plugin will send a REST call to the execution manager to process and request a run. So it could be the request, the bookmark, or the list of processes. Execution manager accepts the works, runs the processes on the agents. Now while this is happening, statuses are sent back. The Jenkins plugins waits for the response and updates the status in the console. So the plugin polls and says, do you have an update? Are the statuses running or completed? And so forth. And then based on the pass or fail, it'll mark the build as pass or failed for you. So let's actually go into Jenkins and see how this works. In Jenkins, I'm going to say, I'll give my project a name. I'll call it Freestyle. OK. So if I come down to my um, build, I'll look at my steps. So there's different things that can be done. So execute Groovy scripts and such. If we scroll down, we'll see run execution manager request from the drop down. So this means I've installed the plugin. And I can see here, I now prompted for information. So if you wonder, if you go to Google and you search Worksoft Execution Manager Jenkins plugin, you'll get a lot of hits, right? But the top one does point you to the documentation. So there's a wiki out there in Jenkins that gives you information on how to install and then the usage and we give you information on each one of the different input steps itself. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to run an Execution Manager request. So what happens is it looks at Execution Manager and say, what requests do you have out there? So I have this one called Jenkins Build Order to Cache. I'll select that. And then maybe I want to put um, some different parameters in there. So parameters are information from the build itself. So if I don't have them memorized, I'll just click Available. And I can see here I can get like the build number that's being done, build display name, Jenkins home, different environment variables basically from Jenkins. I'm going to copy the build number and I want to put that over here. So I happen to know that it's dollar parentheses. So I'm going to take that variable, oops, of the build number and I want to send it to my certified process. In this case, I have a certified result attribute so what happens when I run this process, the certified result attribute will have the build number, and then I can search my certified results for um, any tests that ran against this build. Okay. So if I click Save, that's all it takes. I can now um, build this process, and what we'll see here is it will make a request, it'll find that, and send it over to Execution Manager. So if I come to Execution Manager Home, I can see here it's started. I've got my order to cache. It's running on New Mexico. So basically Jenkins has sent the request execution manager to have this run. If we want to spy on it, I can see it's starting here. Execution manager is starting the agent. It's logging into the machine. It will run the processes and send the results back. 
So while this is happening, the certified processes will um, will be the certified execution manager will update statuses inside there. So when it's complete, we'll get the um, build console and we can see what happened and if it passed or failed. So what happens is as the process is running, we see it execute and then we get the status. So in my case, oops, looks like I didn't I didn't put my build I misspelled build number string. Well, that failed my process. I know how to fix that, right? So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go back up and I'm going to configure and I'm going to spell build correctly. Build number status. How about that one? And I'll run it again. And the second time, I'm sure it'll work fine. So the concept is um, anytime you get an error and certify and such, the error messages will ripple back. So it can be a functional error like the test passed or failed, or it can be something like I did a configuration error. So if I spy in, console output, we'll see it's now running. So it'll go from the status of idle to executing, and then it'll complete. So there's another video that goes over all the rest calls and gives you details of the statuses. What we've done with the Jenkins plugin is we basically have used the exact same um, statuses that you get and the exact same rest calls that that are available. But we've just implemented a Jenkins plugin for you to make it simple. And we have the concept of polling for work. And as this runs, you'll get statuses back over here. Okay. So while this is running, I'm going to go and um, spy on it and say, where is this running? It's running on New Mexico again. It may have already completed by now. Let's see. It's like, yep, no, it's still working away. Okay. So what are some other things that can happen here? So if I'm going to come back, and I'm going to say configure this. Now, there are some other options here. That's I chose to say execution manager request. You can also do a bookmark. So we do the same thing. We look up into um, the management studio and say, what are the different bookmarks that are available? And so when I select the bookmark, what happens is any processes associated with the certified bookmark are run. And then I want to give it a um, results folder. And in this case, those same processes was run, and I would set the um, result attribute. The last way you can do this is by actually setting up a certified process or a list of certified processes. So the idea is you put the database alias and the project. So if you come here and you click help, it'll tell you the name of the alias is contained in Management Studio. So if I come to Management Studio, I have Management Studio, I have Certified Configuration, I have a database called Certified Demo. I'm going to copy that. I'll put that here. And then you've got your project name. Well, obviously, that's my Certified Project and Results folder and request name. So if I come to Certify, I can see I have functional tests, regression tests, integration tests, and so forth. So functional tests is my project. My results folder. My request name. And then I need to give a path to the process. Okay, And I can add multiple of these if I want to put two of these over there. So I know this is functional tests. And if I look at certify over here, I'm going to put them side by side. So I can pick any tests I want. Say so maybe I want one dot regression test. And look in the, oops, let's spell that right. And then one dot one. So there's my integration tests. I'm going to copy this for my sec second row. So 
So I've got my Fury Crate order test I want to run. If I want to run a second one, maybe I put my um, SAP only OTC. Can't type today. Okay, and I can just keep adding them there. So the idea is with the freestyle build is you're going to use the plugin and we've given you some predefined ways to pick things. You can either pick an existing request that's defined an execution manager, you can reference a bookmark to get your certified processes, or you can actually point to one specifically. In this case, you'll need the database alias and then the project, where you want the results, a name, and you can put as many of the certified processes as you want. And then this will then run the same way. The um, only other option here is to the weight configuration. Um, if you want to change that, so how often do you want to poll? So maybe this is a short running test and you want to run every five seconds to understand what's going on. Maybe this runs, um, you know, for several hours. So you want to actually spend, spend a little more time waiting and then you can give it a maximum run time if you want. The maximum run time says if this runs more than this period, amount of time, execution manager will issue a kill to it. If it's left empty, it will just run until the process is complete. So thank you for your time. This is an example of using the out-of-the-box Jenkins plugin for Worksoft. Um, and look, uh, there's some more videos in this channel that give you details about the REST calls that were used, and there will be other videos on how to build a pipeline build versus a freestyle build.